I have a couple of DJI drones, but they're big, they're bulky, and they're expensive. And you can't do fun stuff like this with it. They don't follow from the front, which is really weird. So I picked up this Hover Air X1. It was a crowdfunding thing. I think they're selling them on their own site now. And the first thing you'll notice is how small and light this thing is. But it's pretty darn capable if you don't need to go several hundred feet in the air and get an FAA license. You can use this in your house. Very light batteries. I bought the kit that had two batteries in the charger. You can charge the battery on the drone itself, but this is pretty handy if you want to have multiple batteries. You only get about 10 minutes out of these things because the batteries aren't big. They're not heavy, which is one of the pros on this unit. So you just pop these things in here in their USB-C charger. They even give you a cable, which is really nice. So this kit is everything you need to get started. So here is the drone itself. It comes with instructions, but they're largely useless. And their primary language, I believe, is Chinese, which is kind of bizarre. Well, they're selling these all over the world, but usually they put something else there. But nonetheless, here's the unit itself. You can see it's enclosed in some kind. It's kind of a flexible material. It is kind of a plasticky thing, but it has a little bit of a give, unlike a DJI thing. I almost put a DJI drone through somebody's truck's windshield. It was very bad. And this, I've crashed into a wall a couple of times, and it just bounces off nicely. And when it crashes into something, it stops and lowers itself. Will it be far away? No, because you can't really go further than like 50 feet from yourself, which is also another pro. In a lot of cases, you really don't need to go further than that. Comes, This is a bag. The whole thing in the battery charger will fit in this soft bag, and you could use it to clean the lens as well. And this is the included USB cord. So you just plug in your battery charger. I threw these on charge, and I charged the other one inside the unit itself. This is what it looks like when it's syncing the Bluetooth. You got a little blue flashy light in the front. And look how small it folds up. I mean, this thing is super light, but it is super capable with video up to 2.7K at 30 frames per second and 1080 at 60. This is my first flight. I'm just sitting here in my kitchen. I, what does this thing do? I didn't believe it. You know, I picked one of these things up. Oh, it's alive. You press the green button. Now, there's a couple of different modes. Actually, there's a bunch of different modes, and they do force you to go through the modes in the app before you can go free flying. They want you to fly this thing a couple times, see what it can do, get the feel for it, and then you can freely control it. And again, it's only going to go 50 feet up and 50 feet away from you, so it's never going to go far. It does not need a satellite. It does not have GPS in it, but... Do you really need that? I found I didn't really use a lot of that stuff. So this was my first flight and it is looking down upon me and it's kind of cool. It, what I found really surprising was the video quality. Now this is a difficult shot. We're shooting right into a sunrise here and it did a pretty good job. I'm not silhouetted, so I was really blown away at how it kept me in focus and how I was not blown out by the sun. So that was really cool. And the following is surprisingly accurate. It's not super fast, but it then kind of picks up what it needs to. So I decided, I finally went through all the practice rounds and I got to do my first free flight. And I took it out in front of the house and I took it up as high as I can get it. And it was high enough to get over a two-story house. I couldn't get it up much higher than this. I'll be honest, I was kind of afraid. I didn't want to lose it on the roof. It's kind of awkward asking your neighbors for permission to go up on the roof. Hey, can I get my drone? Yeah, go ahead, you idiot. So it looks pretty cool, right? This is my neighborhood here. And really, this gets as high as I need it personally to get. Because I do a lot of bike demonstration videos and some running stuff and some nature stuff. And I really don't need to go higher than this. Actually, this would be enough for this movie project I'm working on, too. And the video quality you're looking at here is amazing. It connects over Bluetooth, transmits the video wirelessly, and it is fabulous. So if you're in construction, you need to look at roofs. You need to check your gutters. Super handy for that. You just want to do some bird's eye view and some flybys, surveillance. I can think of a thousand things you could use this thing for, and it's so small and light that you can bring it anywhere. Pretty easy to control. The on-screen controls through the app, which is available through iOS or Android, is pretty simple to use. There's forward, back, and you can change the gimbal. Yes, you can move the gimbal up and down, which is also super helpful and not available in a lot of lower priced drones. And this thing, I think I paid about $350, $370, somewhere in that neighborhood for the whole kit with the extra battery and the battery charger. So that's pretty good. When you consider the price of the DJI drones, I paid like $1,200 for one of them bad boys. 
and you can go up too, depending on how professional you need to get. But a lot of people don't use a lot of their functionality. A lot of people I talk to are like, I don't need it. I'm doing bike videos. I just need it to be 10 feet away from me, a little bit over my head. And again, what's nice about this is if it does crash into something, it's not gonna rip somebody's fingers off. It's not gonna tear somebody's hair up because it has that protective casing around it. So we said, Alexa, take our drone for a spin inside our dark house at night. We have a combination of LED and incandescent lights, and you can see it does a really good job. Yes, her name is Alexa. Imagine the confusion that causes. So she walked around our entire kitchen. It followed her nicely, didn't bump in anything. It does have some sort of collision avoidance, not as advanced as the DJI. You see, it's not gonna be able to make this turn here. She tried to walk it in there. It's like, no, there's something here. I'm not moving. So she had to back up and straighten it out, which is pretty simple to do, right? So it had enough of clearance to make that corner. And it went in and check out what it did with the light in the bedroom. Totally dark bedroom, no lights on in here. And it did an admirable job considering the size of this lens. It's a tiny little thing. So yeah, I'm definitely impressed with the capabilities of the Hover Air X1 considering its size and price.